Hello comrades, this is General Luigi, and welcome to Let's Prepare to Play Fire Emblem Awakening. Almost there, huh? All we have left now are the two shapeshifters in the first group. No, I don't have any reason to believe it's out of preference for humans that I saved Noe and Pan for last. In all honesty, these two are just people I've never really had a specific husband in mind for. Anyway, as always, before I start, I feel I should remind you that I'm classifying pairings according to my personal views on what works, what doesn't, what's believable, and what isn't. You are free to disagree with me, and I wouldn't be surprised if you did, but as I pointed out in the prologue, I will not stand for flaming. This week, we will be choosing a husband for someone who looks, and often acts, way too young to be married in most countries. She's actually about as old as Poland, though. You'll just have to take my word for it. I'll give you the full rant in the actual LP. For now, let's just focus on getting her a husband. The first candidate is Kellum. Noe's supports with him start off with her essentially agreeing to serve as Kellum's older sister. It comes off as a bit like Lissa's earlier supports with Donald, but here the focus is on playing rather than on calling attention to the age difference. That's not to say Noe doesn't take advantage of her seniority, but she doesn't patronize Kellum. Since Noe likes to play hide-and-seek, however, she does end up getting upstaged simply because of Kellum's incredible hiding skills. We also learn a bit about how he developed this ability, though. As a kid, Kellum was very selfish and refused to share. To discourage his behavior, his family ignored him, no doubt hoping that he'd stop once he realized being mean wouldn't get him any attention. That's pretty much all there is to it. Noe's saddened by the story and feels she can relate to how lonely he felt being ignored. In the S-level conversation, Kellum proposes to Noe. I feel their conversations did a fabulous job of making them come off as brother and sister despite the differences in appearance and species. That's probably why I have no end of difficulty supporting this pairing. Even though I know for a fact that they're not related by blood, I can't picture them as anything other than siblings in these supports. Class Zero. Next, we have Lonku. When Noe approaches him wanting to play, Lonku expresses no interest and comes off as quite annoyed at Noe's behavior, especially when she appears to start crying over his refusal to play with her. I suspect she's faking. Can't prove it, though. Lonko agrees to play with her, but for a different reason. Though not swayed by Noe's alleged tears, he can't help but wonder why her gender doesn't make him nervous. I suspect it's because she looks like a child, but is it really that hard to ascertain her gender when she looks the way she does? <sighs> Again, I can't prove my hypothesis as it's never explained in-game. Anyway, Noe decides for them to play house. Bit by bit, Lonku appears to grow fond of the game. Come S-level, he wants it to no longer be a game. I'm kind of conflicted about this pairing. On the one hand, it partially comes off to me as though I'm seeing the husband and wife in an arranged marriage actually grow to love each other. And yet, part of me feels as though Lonku is more so making the game fun than actually growing close to Noe. It's a very good pairing, but I just can't shake this doubt I have about it. So, I'm making it a Class 2 pairing. Noe's supports with Rickon kind of wander all over the place. In a sense, this actually makes me feel as though they were close even before the conversations start, which makes it a lot easier for me to actually believe there's a bond between them. The series starts with Rickon taking the fall for a fire that Noe accidentally started. Apparently, she transformed in her sleep and set some of the tents ablaze. In the B-level conversation, it's revealed that Rickon snapped at some civilians that were speaking ill of Krom. He perceived them as ungrateful for all that Krom was doing to protect them. Noe is able to relate, saying that if someone talked that way about someone she liked, she would eat them. Both of them express a desire to help people. In the A-level conversation, the two of them had attended a wedding in a nearby village. To keep Noe from getting lonely after the war ends, Rickon suggests they go on a tour of every festival they could find afterwards. I feel this is a nice lead-in to Rickon's marriage proposal in the S-level conversation. In large part because their bond is well established from the get-go, I have no trouble buying the transition to love. Heck, part of me sees that transition actually starting during the A-level conversation. The problem of how slowly Noe ages is brought up, but both are willing to marry despite the fact that Rickon would eventually die of old age while Noe would likely look no older than 14 by that time if her current appearance is any indication. 
This is definitely a class 3 pairing in my book. With Libra, attention is once again called to his dark past during his supports with Noe. He mentions a wound of the heart when Noe asks about a scar on his neck. Said wound is, of course, his being abandoned by his parents, something you probably recall from his supports with Tharja. Of course, Noe takes the talk about a wound of the heart literally and offers to rub his heart until the pain goes away. She's stopped, however, by her ignorance of human anatomy. Thus, she has no idea where Libra's heart is. Libra goes with a figurative explanation that he's avoided what's in his heart for so long that he too has no idea where it is. It's possible he seriously has no idea, though. Anyway, after a simple effort to feel around for his heart yields no results, other than Libra discovering he's extremely ticklish, Noe chooses a different approach, taking Libra all over the camp with her so he can introduce himself to everyone in the army. It's during this time that Libra's heart arguably heals through his opening of it to the people around him. In the S-level conversation, Libra finds his heart when Noe touches his scar. Libra proposes to Noe at that point. I'm able to see a definite bond forming between the two of them over the course of their conversations. I can also easily buy them falling in love, though I did have to search a little to see signs of it in the conversations themselves. Still, this pairing manages to make the cut for Class 3. Finally, Noe's supports with Donal look into their respective pasts. As it turned out, Donal got a special stone from his late father. Said stone supposedly has a great power hidden within it, so Donal promised to find said power. Noe never knew her father though, so she's a bit envious of the promise Donal made. She was kidnapped right after she was born, you see. We don't get a lot of details about it though, only that her place of birth is very far away and she doesn't recall exactly how to get there. Because of this, Donald promises to help her figure out where it is. That's really all there is to these supports, in my opinion. Donald proposes to Noe in the S-level conversation, but with what happened in the conversations leading up to it, their falling in love strikes me as rather sudden. As such, I consider this a Class Zero pairing. You know, when I first started looking over Noe's potential romantic supports in preparation for this LP, I expected this video to be full of Class Zero pairings. As with Tharja, I feel reading over these supports has given me a better overall opinion of Noe. Some characters in this game only really grew on me after a few playthroughs. I can't promise Noe will be seeing much action, but we do need to marry her off. You know the drill. If you want any of the Class Zero pairings reclassified, you have until 12 o'clock p.m. Pacific Daylight Time this Wednesday, March 19th, to convince me to do so. The polls will close at 12 o'clock p.m. this Saturday, March 22nd. After that, we'll only have Pan to marry off, and then the first episodes of the LP will begin. I will see you next time.